Hello, welcome to another episode of Game Worms. I'm Bryant Real, and today we're going to be talking about the units of Twilight Imperium 4. Alright, Twilight Imperium 4 has nine units that are, I would say, basic units, so everybody has them in common, with some exceptions, so different factions will have advanced versions of each unit, but there's nine units that are basically the same for all the 24 factions. There are also two units that everyone has but are unique, and those are the flagships and with the uh, Prophecy of Kings expansion, the mechs. So we're not really going to talk about flagships and mechs today, except that everybody has one, they're all different, and we'll have to cover them in the faction-specific episodes. So today we're just going to cover the nine basic units. Again, if there's anything unique about a faction, we'll cover it in their own episode. So we'll start off with the uh, factories of your system, and that's the space docks. So space docks is where you build your fleets and your infantry, and you move them out from there. So if you look at the space dock on the this faction sheet, I'm going to use the Nomad as an example. And if you look at the bottom right, it'll say space dock 1. So every version, every unit has a 1 and 2 version. So an unupgraded and then an upgraded version. So the space dock, the, the non-upgraded space dock, has a production value equal to two more than the planet, the resource value of the planet it is connected to. So most factions' space docks are attached to a specific planet. The importance of the resource value of the planet is that it determines how many units you can build at a space dock. So if you look at the bottom of the space dock section, it says production X. X equals the planet's resource value plus two. So if your home system, for example, has a resource value of 4, the space dock on that planet can build a maximum of 6 units per build. Now if you wanted to improve that, you can upgrade to a space dock 2. So if you look at the bottom right of the space dock, it has two yellow triangles and an upgrade symbol with an up-pointing arrow. So the up-pointing arrow, arrow on all of these little sections we're going to talk about means that if you upgrade, something will improve. The two yellow uh, triangles each represent technologies, and we haven't really talked about yet, but there's four colors of technologies. This is just basically saying you need two yellow technologies in order to research space dock. And what do you get for upgrading? If you upgrade your space dock, its base production value goes from 2 to 4. So that means instead of uh, being able to produce your planet's resource value plus two, so on, if you know a planet, home planet of four, you can now do, you can build six. With the upgrade, you could build four plus the planet, so eight, if you have a production four planet. Again, that's the limit number of units. It's not the limit number of money you can spend. So you could buy, you know, that many infantry, that many dreadnoughts, that many destroyers. You know, as long as you have enough pieces. You can build whatever, but only eight, six or eight, you know, in this example. Okay. Uh, the next unit we're going to talk about is the uh, infantry. So infantry are the meat of your conquests. So as you explore the galaxy, you're not doing yourself much good if you're not taking the planets that you're flying by, because that's where you get more resources and influence and exploration if you have the expansion. So you need infantry to take planets, to claim planets. And infantry will also defend your own planets from somebody else taking them over. So the ungraduated, the first level infantry, uh, it says it has a cost value. So it says a one with two flags next to it. So flags being the symbol here for infantry. That means for every one resource you spend, you can build two infantry. It also has a combat of 8. A combat of 8 means uh, in, in TI4 in combat, you roll 10-sided dice. And you need to roll an 8 or higher to hit anything, in this case. The up arrow next to the 8 means that when you upgrade your infantry, that value will improve. It's to upgrade your infantry to green technologies. And what do you get when you 
upgrade your infantry. So the combat value has gone from 8 to 7. So going down is good. So you used to hit on an 8 or higher. Now you hit on a 7 or higher. In addition, your infantry gained something called Gen Synthesis, which means that every time one of your infantry dies, you can roll a die, and if you get a 6 or 10, basically, it, you can resurrect that unit back into your home system. All right. Now, the next unit is the PDS-1. PDS-1 is your planetary defense system. Planetary defense system is used for protecting areas of space as well as the planet that it's placed on. And it has two features, a planetary shield, which can block bombardment. So sometimes when people come to invade your planet with infantry, they'll have large ships that can bomb your planet, and the planetary shield can help defend against those. It also has Space Cannon 6, which means it can shoot into the system, into space. So it's on a planet, but it can shoot into space, basically. So when ships come and park in your system, you can fire at them. And then again, once they've dropped infantry onto your planet, they can shoot at the infantry as well. And they fire at the very beginning of combat, not every round of combat. All right, and when you upgrade your PDS, it gains a really neat ability called Space Cannon, or Deep Space Cannon, which means that you cannot... You not only just can shoot into the, your own space in your own system, you can shoot into adjacent systems. So basically your, your cannons, your space cannons become very long range. It also improved the space cannon value from 6 to 5. So now they hit on a 5 or higher instead of a 6. All right, fighters. So fighters um, are kind of the, the fighter screens, the cannon fodder. So fighters are your cannon fodder most of the, a lot of the time, as they take a lot of hits away from uh, more expensive capital ships. Just like the infantry, they cost uh, one to buy two fighters, so they're quite cheap. Their combat isn't great. They hit on a 9 or 10, but you'll see with that arrow that will improve when you upgrade them. And their move, it says it has a little line. That means because when fighters, the, the level 1 fighters, fighter 1s, can't fly on their own. They have to be carried by a larger ship. So like a carrier or a dreadnought, which we'll talk about. Um, you have to upgrade them to Fighter 2 in order for it to have its own movement, which means it, it can now travel long range. It doesn't need to be carried by somebody else. The combat also improved to 8. Okay. And those ones, again, the fighter screens are used primarily to set up to uh, keep hits away from the other capital ships, which can be a real pain. But... Twilight Imperium 4 has thought of a way to deal with those pesky fighters, and that is with the Destroyer. So right above the fighter there. Destroyers have an ability called Anti-Fighter Barrage, which means at the very beginning of space combat, they kind of get a free shot against the fighters. Now, the first level Destroyer has an Anti-Fighter Barrage of 9, so it hits on a 9 or a 10, and it gets two dice. So one time beginning of combat ability, but can help clear that fighter screen out a little. And it still fights in the regular coming combat. has a cost of one resource. Combat is nine, so again, not great in the regular combat. Uh, move of two, though, so it can fly independently, unlike the level one fighters. But um, so it's, it's pretty quick, so it can fly by itself. But when you upgrade the destroyer to level two, they get automated defense turrets, which really improves their anti-fighter barrage. So now they hit on a six or higher instead of a nine or higher, and they get three instead of two dice. So these are really great at just blowing out all the enemy's fighter screens. It also has a, co a basic combat of 8 instead of 9. So good bang for your buck. It's a pretty cheap ship. Um, and because it's so cheap, it's not, you know, once they've done their job taking out as many fighters as they can at the beginning, they make pretty good casualties as well. Okay, above that is the Cruiser 1. Uh, cruisers, I don't know, kind of... The, le the level 1 cruiser is kind of just a meh, run-of-the-mill combat ship. It costs 2, so it costs like the price of 2 destroyers. It does hit better, so it hits on a 7 or higher, and it's the same speed. But you'll notice it has a lot of little up arrows. That's because the level 2 cruiser improves it quite a bit. So the level 2 cruiser has stasis capsules. Its combat improves from 7 to 6, uh, it move, its move goes up to 3, which makes it the fastest base ship in the game at level 2. And it also gains capacity. And this is the first uh, ship that we were talking about that has a capacity feature. Uh, this is where the 
uh, stasis, stasis capsules come in is that the ship is now equipped to carry infantry. Uh, it can also carry fighters, so any ship with capacity can carry that number of fighters and or infantry and or mechs if you have the expansion. So a cruiser 2 uh, has a capacity of 1, which isn't a lot, but because the ship is so fast, it can be very useful for tucking in to, if you need a planet just to get a some objective at the end of the round, you can just slip a quick cruiser in there, drop one guy, you know, maybe take an objective or a you know important planet or something like that. All right, so let's go to the carriers. Carriers are kind of the meat and bones of your invasion forces because that's how you get your infantry from point A to point B. They're kind of expensive at three. Uh, their combat is nine and will not improve when you upgrade, so they're pretty lousy in space combat by themselves, but they're a very vital part of the fleet. They have a move of one, so they're a little slow, but they have a capacity of four. So that means they can hold four in any combination of infantry, fighters, and uh, mech units. So this is kind of the meat, the meat and potatoes of your fleet is going to be the carrier, just because you need them to get the infantry around that you need to take a lot of planets. Now when you upgrade them, they finally get to move two, and this is one where I think the upgrade is actually really important because otherwise they're slowing your entire fleet down. But it also increases the capacity to six, so suddenly you're carrying on a whole lot more units. So this is one I would say if you're going if you're going to just only choose one ship to upgrade, unless your faction has a special ship, um, I think this is almost always the best choice. Somebody in the comments maybe will disagree with me. Okay, the dreadnought is kind of your you know your average I would say admiral fleet ship. It's going to be kind of the big leader of your in a lot of cases. They're big, slow, strong ships, but they have a couple really interesting abilities. So the Dreadnought 1 has sustained damage, and that's the first ship we're looking at with this ability. And sustained damage means that it can take a hit, it can soak a hit basically before it's destroyed. So normally in combat, every hit that your enemy rolls against your fleet, you lose one unit. A one unit was one hit, it blows up. But a ship with sustained damage, when it gets hit the first time, you just flip it over to show that it's damaged, and one more hit will destroy it. But it basically soaks one of the hits. Dreadnought actually has bombardment as well. So we talked about this with the PDSs. So when you're doing a ground invasion, you're sending all your troops down onto a planet, the Dreadnought will bomb the snot out of that planet. It does it once at the very beginning. But each Dreadnought can, sh can, can drop uh, fire down on a planet. Uh, planetary shield though will block that. So P if they have a PDS on that planet, your your dreadnought won't fire, or it won't bombard at least. Um, it costs four. So again, we're getting kind of into the more expensive ships. Combat five. So it hits a five or higher. So that's a like a sixty percent chance of hitting your target. So that's pretty good. Move of one, but again, that will increase. The impressive thing here is it starts with a capacity of one. So. If you're one of the lucky fleets that starts with a dreadnought at the beginning of the game, this is a nice way to get a you know a pretty strong ship out. It's only moving one guy, but uh, you don't need to worry necessarily about protecting it as much as you would a carrier. Uh, if you upgrade the dreadnought, it suddenly becomes a lot more useful. The only thing that really increases is the uh, move goes up to two. I think it was the most vital upgrade. Um, it does, the bombardment roll does improve a little. It does have a ability called the unit cannot be destroyed by direct hit action cards. So there is an action card where if you use your sustained damage ability, somebody can play that card to immediately blow up your ship. The Dreadnought 2 is immune to that action card. But I would say the most vital, if you're going to upgrade your Dreadnought, the, the move 2 alone is makes it worthwhile, just so it can keep up with the rest of the fleet. If you'll notice on the War Sun here, uh, it doesn't have any abilities yet. And that's because you cannot build a War Sun until you have researched the War Sun technology. And if you look on the right side of the card, that's a long road to get to. So you need three reds and a yellow in order to get the War Sun. Quite common that you'll never get the War Sun to the table. There is one faction that starts with a War Sun, that's the Embers of Muat. For the most part, it's pretty standard. Most factions won't even get it. 
Although, you know, if one gets it, you know that the necrovirus are probably going to get it. Okay, so what's uh, so when you build it, though, what do you get? It is a pretty good ship. Uh, so basically, <laughs> you have a text ability. You have a lot of great abilities. So first of all, other players' units in the system lose planetary shield. So any PDSs in this system, while their space cannons will still work, their planetary shields will not, which means all ships with a bombardment, including your dreadnoughts, can bombard if there's a war sun present. They are super expensive, cost of 12 resources to get out, and you'll notice in your plastic they only have, there's only two, you can never have more than two of them. Uh, they do have sustained damage, just like the Dreadnoughts. They do have bombardment, but way better. So they have, uh, they hit on a three or higher, and they roll three dice. And that's the same with their combat. So you see they have a three with those three little stars. That means they hit on a three or higher, and they get three dice. So they, uh, basically, they just, Assume they're going to hit everything they shoot at. Uh, they're pretty dangerous ships. Also a move two, so they're quick. And capacity six, so that puts them on par with the uh, upgraded carrier. So they carry a lot of fighters and infantry. So those come out, it's a pretty big deal, but again, because of the long tech road to get them, not that many factions are probably going to see them come out. Some will. If you focus on it, you know. Anyway, again, so that's the basic here. Um, there are going to be exceptions. Uh, many of the factions will have special versions of a lot of these ships. So, for example, the Titans of Ol have a Saturn engine instead of a cruiser. It's basically a better, really much better cruiser. Uh, the Argent Flight have upgraded, you know, better destroyer. So a lot of the factions will have variations of these that we'll cover in the specific factions uh, episodes. And as well, we'll go over their individual flagship and mech units. So... That's good for today. Thank you, and good gaming.